Konnichiwa, Mina-san. Welcome back to the kitchen. As you can see, the roof is not yet finished. Still need to get some plasterboard on there, but spent the whole day driving around three cities. Couldn't find it, so I think it's going to have to be shipped in. As we're currently living in the house, renovations have been slowed, but it's time to continue. And we've decided that if we're going to do it, let's do it right. Over the past year, while cleaning and renovating the house, I would often come to the village and stay for one to three weeks at a time. The rest of the year, I was busy with projects in Indonesia. The kitchen renovation started when I realized I was flying out one day later than expected and I had one more day to work on the house. So with one more day and an inability to sit still, it was time to make a mess. I initially thought this would be a quick redo, remove the ceiling, put a new one in, paint it and done. It turns out it was my biggest project here to date. Fast forward to the summer and we just moved into the house, living, working, cooking and eating in a construction zone with soot falling from the attic was not an ideal situation. At the same time with two kids running around needing attention and searching adventure, turning this construction zone into a disaster area was not in the cards. I found that I was able to work on the kitchen primarily at night after the kids were in bed. I would work from 7 to 10, clean up until 11 or so, plan what was needed next and then call it a night. As the scope of the project creeped into the near total redo, this three-day project, in the end, would take over a month to complete. And just like that, you bump the machine and your piping breaks. So, yeah, looks like I'm doing plumbing before I'm doing any more demolition. So there's the first look at what was behind that wall. We do have a nice big beam, but it is currently inaccessible for just passing jibs. The electric was just held in there with nothing, live wires sticking out of the wall and directly onto the foundation. So yeah, this is going to be interesting. I am happy that we did find one more black beam here to expose, so that's good news. Taking a first look at the kitchen entranceway, I was initially shocked to find insulation behind the wood siding. I was then equally shocked by how bad the insulation work was done. In the end, these minor secrets from behind the walls are nothing compared to the beauty of what I found next. Luckily, all of these finds are also easily fixed, whether capping, sealing, and boxing the exposed wires, or just replacing some of the questionable insulation. As I got carried away with demolition the other day, I ended up revealing another massive original black beam right there in the corner gonna have to find a way so instead of a faux ceiling I think we're just gonna have to find a way to show off this beautiful black beam however we end up renovating as I removed the wood paneling I noticed that we go directly from floor and kitchen into the foundation so here you can see well that's a kid's toy underneath the floor but here we can see the cement little slabs the wood footings, and that's the whole foundation of the old house. Pretty cool. I think we're gonna to try to insulate this area at least a little bit, create a bit of a barrier, and close it up once again. I'm sorry for the no shirt scene, my only excuse being it was 32 degrees, even at night, with about a thousand percent humidity. It was the only way to keep relatively cool. Expanding the work to include redoing the walls, I was excited to find this wooden wall behind the cabinet. Made of hard wood and covered partially in some cool skiing calendars from the early 70s, I've decided to keep the wood, but sadly the posters could not be saved. I believe the wood to be part of the original house and is the exterior side of the pocket sliding door going to the matrimony room. I call it the matrimony room as in the olden days, with multiple generations living under a roof at the same time, the new bride and groom would move into the room right by the kitchen for some uh, alone time. Sally, the room is now just an office and otherwise used for arts and crafts with the kids. Spreadsheets are fun too though, right? After decades of cooking with fire inside, there's a buildup of creosote on all of the old beams. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrub it down with this uh, chestnut hair brush to try to protect the wood and I'll probably wipe it down with the cloth and then maybe add some beeswax cream to see if that'll moisture it or just like give it a nice little sheen but yeah so this needs a lot of work 
The chestnut brush I mentioned lasted about three seconds. After a quick scrub, it became clear that something stronger was needed. I grabbed the steel wool and it too was too weak. In the end, I used a metal brush similar to a barbecue cleaner. It worked great and didn't damage the wood in the slightest. The black wood has been protected by a traditional staining method known as kakishibu, made of the fermented khaki fruit or parasimon in English. So yeah, slightly messy job. Gonna have to wash this whole room down. But that's a first look. I've been able to get a lot of that creosote off. These beams are also stained black by parasimon juice to prevent termites and the like, but yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be doing that. But yeah, so they've cleaned up. I've given them, given them a wipe. And I think I can either spend days cleaning them or just enjoy it like that. And then just start with the beeswax cream. So I think it's time for the wax. Apparently in Japan, it is illegal to do your own electric work. Now I'm not sure exactly where the limit lies, such as changing a light bulb or replacing a lamp fixture, or the more obvious installing something big like a water heater or a dishwasher, where you need to change fuses and run cables. I decided to play it safe. As all the cables are still accessible, they can still be changed pretty easily in the future. Generally, electric work and a lot of the professional trade work in Japan is expensive. I had my electrical box raised from 30 to 60 amps, and it cost just over $1,000. I didn't end up redoing all the electric, but I did make sure that there are nice closed circuit boxes, checked the connections, fixed them up, and then re-ran all the cables to make it a little cleaner. But that's a go. I did a spot check with putting the beeswax cream on one of the beams here. I'm going to keep it going. And let's see what it looks like after a, after a day or two and we'll see if I do the whole thing. After learning about beeswax cream from a Japanese carpenter on YouTube, I absolutely love the product. I first used it when constructing a bed frame from the reclaimed wood from my neighbor's barn. I think I will try to use it on everything I can. It's not cheap at roughly $40 a liter, but after these two projects, I think I still have half of the jar left, so in the end, it actually is a really great dale. It adds such a nice natural sheen, and it smells great. I'm very happy to use this as opposed to, say, a petroleum product of some kind. I ended up doing the whole thing with beeswax cream, and I think the black really pops. And here you can actually see the actual color of the Zelkova grain. Beautiful. As the old adage goes, measure twice and cut once. I definitely did this. What the old adage doesn't tell you is that although the ceiling is 160 centimeters across at all points, it doesn't mean that those points are perfectly perpendicular or account for irregularities in large wooden beams, not to mention my failures to remove all the nails. With a bit of pressure in the wrong way, this Kelsey board crumbles. I had to be extra careful and get used to appreciating the challenge. To hold the boards in place, I rigged up a piece of wood on a pole to hold the plasterboard in place while I screwed it into the support structure above. This is where the irregularities became a thorn in my side. In the future, I will cut more off and plan on bigger moldings for the edges. The first one took forever, and then the next ones went in in a fraction of the time. We worked out a system where I would cut and place the board and then my wife would help set the T-pole applying enough pressure that the board wouldn't budge, leaving me to screw it in or screw it up. That help from my wife made all the difference. It still took days of cutting and pasting, well, cutting and screwing. It was amazing how much it brightened up the kitchen, even though it was still a construction site, unfinished, rough as can be, the mood was lifting and it was becoming a proper usable space. I ended up using 5mm plasterboard as opposed to gypsum board, partly as it was lighter to lift up and hold into place, but also because I planned to move the insulation I installed in the attic down to be directly on the ceiling here to make as much of an airtight layer as I can. It was also cheaper. I haven't been filming this little bit of the process, but I've started gyp rocking and this full wall here, I've decided to fill it up. So I'm shoving in as much insulation as I possibly can. 
I'm gonna, because some areas here you can kind of see a bit of light between there. So I'm gonna shove it full, fill up the wall, do my best. Otherwise, the gyp rock is coming along, fitting in nicely. It's gonna close up up top there. It's 10.30 at night. Hopefully finish by one or two. After a week or so of work, fast forward to the end of August. I had two days until family arrived and I needed to get the kitchen done before they got in. That didn't mean full days of work, it meant full nights of work. Kids still needed running and the other work still went on. When it came time for the gypsum, what I ended up doing was working from about 7pm until 3 in the morning, clean up until 4, and then get woken up by the kids at about 8. It was a rough couple days, and one reason I missed some of the footage, such as when doing the shikui plaster, I decided to listen to some very heavy music and rock through the night to keep the motivation up. It worked, and I ended up getting it done just in time. I'll make a future video about shikui plaster. It is, wow, it's, it's an interesting substance, and it's hard to work with, but looks amazing when done. I plan to use the same on the entranceway, so maybe by then I will have learned to love it. With a look of black paint going on the moldings, it was time for the finishing touches. It was great to feel the project coming to a close and really starting to enjoy the kitchen as the main room of activity in the house. And there we have it. The kitchen is more or less done. Uh, I say more or less because there's still a few things. The hot water tank went out and so I need to find a new solution, either the thinking gas, which the pipes have already been run, or possibly just an electric one. Um, either on demand or a small tank because it's just for doing dishes. Uh, I'm so happy that we didn't have to replace the pink metal cabinetry. They're still awesome and uh, living strong as is the stainless steel countertop. going to keep that. Uh, new table and thankfully my father brought over some halophane lights from Canada. They're 100 years old. They're from the family house and so now they've moved over here to Japan with me. I'm very, very happy about that. I also installed some pot lights and I tried my hand at shikui plastering. At the time I was pulling all nighters to try to finish it and I didn't have the energy to film. It's, it's the limestone plaster and so it gives an earthen wall look. I like it, but wow, that is a, a definitely a challenge. Anyways, I think that's it for now. Thank you very much and yeah, take care.